when a transaction decides to commit, we first write the commit record to the log. And then we flush the log up to that entry to the disk, and the transaction is now considered to be committed. We need to update the transactions table to commit and flush the dirty data pages to the disk sometime later on. Next comes the new part that makes Aries different from undo logging that we talked about earlier. When all dirty data pages have been written to the disk, we write an end record to the log. And we update the transactions table to say that it is now complete. We will see why we do this in a few slides. Oh, and one last thing. Remember that we are using write ahead logging. Therefore, we must flush the log entry to the disk before the corresponding dirty data pages. And that is why we have step one and step two above. So let's say transaction 100 decides to commit. We first write the commit record to the log, and then we flush the log entry to the disk. We then update the transaction status to commit. And then later on, after we have flushed the dirty data pages to the disk, we write the end record in the log. So the log will look like, in this case, with four entries at that point. After making the appropriate changes to the buffer pool and the dirty pages table, we then finally update the transactions table to say that T100 is now complete. If a transaction aborts, we first write the abort record to the log. Then we start to undo its actions by finding the last write that was performed by that transaction. This is conveniently stored in the last LSN field in the transactions table. We go to the corresponding entry in the log from last LSN and undo the update by looking at the old value that was stored in the payload. When the action is, has been done, undone, we write what is known as a compensation record, or CLR, to the log. The compensation record tells us that we have already undone the action, so we don't want to undo it again. We need a way, however, to identify which action was undone though. To do that, we store a field called the undo next LSN with each CLR, which points to the next log record to undo, if there's one. After the CLR is written, we go back to the log and we retrace using the previous LSN field and see if there are any more actions to be undone. Once that is done, we change the transaction status to abort. And then, as usual, we flush the dirty data pages due to restoration of the previous values to the disk at some point. And then we write the end record to the log and set transaction status to be complete when all that is done. Let's see how this works with an example. Suppose transaction 100 decides to abort. We'll first write the abort record to the log. And then from the last LSN stored in the transactions table, we notice that the first action we need to undo has log record number 103. So we undo that action and we write a compensation log record to the log. Here, the compensation record states that we are reverting back a value to 2 on page number 6. And the next action to undo has LSN 102. How do we know that it is 102? Because we follow from the previous LSN field in the log entry. And that's what it says for log record number 103. We continue this process and undo log record 102. And similarly, writing a CLR for that action to the log. 
In this case, since this transaction has no other actions to undo, the CLR only states that we are writing back value 1 to page number 7. And at that point, we are done with undoing. So we change the transaction status to abort. At some point later on, we will write back all the dirty data pages to the disk. Then we write the end record to the log, and we finally update the transaction status to complete. So this is the basic procedure we follow for transaction abortion. We will see an improved algorithm for undoing the actions performed by a transaction in a few slides.